Well, this week we're at the Beaver Castle Flower and Garden Show, and thank you to our sponsors, Mr. Fothergill Seeds and Cobra Garden. Well, it's really great to be out. This is actually the first flower show of the season and we're in September. Normally we come into the end of the season, but obviously because of things that have happened through the year, they've not been able to take part. So it's great to be here at the Beaver Castle Flower Show. And one of the lovely things that they've got here, as well as the nurseries and all the stands and the talks and the demos, Q&A sessions, are these little mini show gardens. And there are 11 built around the show. And this is a really nice place to sit. I'm on this lovely arbor, sitting here in the sunshine, which is amazing beautiful views over the lake up to the castle and surrounded by beautiful plants which will all help to attract wildlife in the garden and it's been put together by Mandy who's just here so if I can just grab Mandy um, Mandy hello there are you all right I'm fine thank you so tell me a little bit about this garden that you've made here because you called it the letterbox garden so what's the inspiration behind it I come from Coningsby in Lincolnshire and the post office has a little area at the back where they threw some wildflower seeds down but it didn't really do what it was supposed to do. So when I heard about the competition I decided I was going to uh, see whether they would let me design for right, them I and see. Um, so was thrilled to win. And yeah. we've got the post box got there. The post, which Santa's is... post box has been repurposed oh, for, the, for the show and uh, yeah fantastic. And the theme as I can see is about attracting wildlife into yeah. the garden is it because yeah. we've got these lovely structures all up from recycled timber. Yes, it's made out of a picket fence and the idea was that you can find an image on Pinterest and you can create whatever you want to do. So luckily I've got a very talented husband and right. I set him to work and he made these. It took him two days um, and we have a home for a blue tit. We have a little letterbox here where a robin could go but we've actually had a bumblebee this oh week right. who's been sheltering in there yeah. every night and coming out every morning. And down here we have a little hole for a wren oh or, right. a, uh, or a little mouse yeah. and then we've got all these here for insects yeah, and lots, lots of, of um, poppy seed hairs yeah. and sticks and logs and bits of stone and pebble and slate and things right. that they like to shelter in and we've had lots of earwigs and ladybirds and wood lice and things like that so you don't think they're there but they're hiding, they're in, there hiding in there and of course yeah. the, the most important thing is water they need Absolutely. somewhere to drink yeah yeah, yeah flowers to feed on to get the nectar. It's yeah, lovely, isn't it? It's just come together Thank really you. nicely. This Thank is you. the sort of thing anybody could put in the corner of their garden to yes. make a really interesting... And you could also make it bigger if you wanted Absolutely, to. You could just yeah. pull it out. It's yeah. all about inspiring yeah. people, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, so, and you yes. can't see all the garden at once. You've got to move around okay. through the garden and have a little And look. you say you've won this competition. Five of us have all won and then we got the chance to come and actually build oh, the garden for Great. real. Yeah. Lovely. So now it's just down to the people's choice right. and whether yeah. they like it too. And what do the public think? I would imagine they love it, don't they? Oh, the reaction has been amazing. Amazing, right. and I think the children have loved it because they're finally little birds' nests that I've got hiding in oh, the log right. piles and things like Wonderful. that. So it's, it, it's been an interactive one as well, which yeah, is nice. That's great. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. good luck with the people's choice. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, the last time we saw Paula Outridge was when we went to look at her garden oh, a few months ago. And she's here at the Beaver Castle Garden Show and she's created this wonderful installation with her friend and colleague, Lynn, who's just doing some bits there. Come and join us, Lynn. So just tell us, Paula and Lynn, one at a time, because I've only got one microphone, <laughs> what the inspiration is behind this. Lynn's yeah. a garden designer. As you know, I'm a horticulturist and a flower ranger. So we've just put our skill sets together and we decided to create a garden based around people getting involved in gardening during lockdown mm -hmm. so I can see a rainbow and Lynn's idea was the upturned umbrellas right okay so yeah so you've never worked together before then no no but no, you, you know each together. other uh, yes. we, we met yes. sort of at Chatsworth didn't we uh, last year so yeah it just came from the inspiration of these uh, umbrellas with the bright colours and 
just having a bit of fun and yeah. creating something for people to. We need a bit of fun now, we don't need we, to a bit liven of fun, things absolutely. up? Yeah. yeah, and it's lovely. I bet loads of people have stopped and had a look at this, haven't oh, they? They, have. they yeah. all said we're going home with their umbrellas yeah. tonight. Yes. <laughs> now I'm interested in this mannequin here. Um, so this who is, is this modelled on? This is Hello, Edwina. Um, we've got Edwina and we've got Patsy over there in the chair. And uh, she was spray painted by my mum actually. When I arrived on Friday to set up, John Sterland, a friend of mine, thought this looked like, like somebody Jill. thought it looked like Jill. We did now, call her how, Mrs. Fish for a short while. How, how <laughs> he knows that Jill looks like that and that's you know the, her body, I don't know. It was know, the but, hairstyle. Oh, I think. I think, oh right, yeah, of course. He yes, wasn't course. looking at the rest. No, no, no that's right. <laughs> Have you had a division of labour then? Because I know Paul is the florist, so you've done all the planting side, is that right? Yeah, we've sort of done it between us. Obviously, Paula is the expert in the flowers, so I've, I've kept a little way from those and just handed a few things. But we just work really well together and we've just yeah. Yeah. had a just good laugh. Had we've laugh enjoyed and... working together. Yeah. It's very yeah. relaxed. We've not been judged as a garden. No. Um, we've, we've been getting votes for the people's choice. Good, so absolutely. Crossed, yeah. We might, yeah. We might get that. You yeah. Never know. And I think you've drunk a lot of pims while you've been here as well. Only half a glass. My other glass is waiting. <laughs> good. <laughs> so this is the selfie circle yes, here. So yes. do you two want to get in there? For, yeah. Are you allowed to do that? We've had so well. Are you, we're in a bubble. Are you in a bubble? In a bubble. Okay. Bubble. Good luck with the people's vote. Nice to Bye. see you both. Okay. Take care, it's beautiful. Lots of nurseries selling plants and this particular one I've heard have got some frilly knickers and I'm not quite sure what they are so I'm going to ask one of the owners of the business, this is Rosie Hardy. Hi Rosie. Hello there Martin. Rosie, is it true you've got your frilly knickers here? Yeah, my frilly knickers. My husband's been having great fun selling them I all the time. Has. You know, emptying the drawer out of them and you, you, all the puns have come out. So what colour are your frilly knickers? Well, they're this beautiful... Ah, oh, it's a plant. It's a oh, plant. Oh, I see. Yes. You told me something different. Well, he would, wouldn't he? So it's it's got a beautiful front to it, really, really frilly, fully double flower, and then the reverse is this amazing lilac purple, mm. and it's an anemone. Right, so okay. it's one of the autumn flowering anemones. It's not like your normal Japanese anemones, so those you know are in your garden, your neighbours, and they're all the same plant. They've all gone yeah. wandering around and saying, oh no, I want to stay here rather than with you. This one makes a lovely clump. And it just bulks up and it looks really great. It flowers from August right the way through to October. And you know, when we saw it flowering like that, I stupidly said, oh, it's like frilly knickers. And everyone said, the name's got to stick. Right. So that's what's happened. So this is a brand new plant. It's brand new plant. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So it's we, we bred it at the nursery. It's taken us five years for it to become stable, to make sure that it doesn't revert. Mm -hmm. And then now in the sixth season, we're now able to sell it to people because right. we know that it's going to be true and they're going to keep going and they'll yeah. enjoy it. Amazing. So this will be available on the market? It's sort of. available on mm. the market. We've been selling it here. It's available yeah. mail order from us at the nursery. Okay. And, you know, it'll be available next spring from other uh, centres as right, well. Right, OK. And you've come all the way from Hampshire to be here at the Beaver Castle Flower Show. Have you had a good weekend? We've had a brilliant weekend, yeah. yeah. It's a fabulous setting. You know, you've got these super old oak trees, a beautiful lake, fantastic weather. And the people who've been coming out and visiting have been so friendly. They've just enjoyed enjoyed being mm -hmm. outside, enjoying the atmosphere and being able to buy plants again, you Absolutely, know, and yeah. listen to people who, you know, on the roadshow and all of this thing, they're getting instant gratification because Good. they're able to grab the plants and take Absolutely. them home. Absolutely. And how have Frilly Knickers gone? Okay. Frilly Knickers have gone. Their, their drawer is nearly empty. Oh, really? So this is it? This is it, all that's left that's of Frilly that's Knickers? That's all that's left Frilly Knickers. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Empty van on the way home. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Good. It's going to take five minutes to load well, up. long may your Frilly Knickers continue to flourish. Oh, thank you very <laughs> thank much. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you. 
All the gardens along this row have been designed and built by garden design students and this particular one here which is beautiful has been designed by Amber and not only is it beautiful but it's taken the trophy as the best garden in the show. It really is lovely Amber, well done. Very kind, thank you very much, yes, thank so, you. So tell me what's the inspiration behind it? So I looked at the site and on Beaver Castle they have an amphitheatre and so the logs have been stacked in the shape of the kink you find in the auditorium stairs as you right. walk down and they also coppice timber on site um, so it's a nice sustainable process to produce energy and then what I've done is increase the opportunity for wildlife in terms of forage mm -hmm. but also in terms of nesting material and pollen nectar um, included a lot of different shapes of flowers so the different shape of flower affects what kind of insect mm -hmm. or wildlife that you'll get coming to your garden Right. The wall also happens to provide a bit of shade, which is really important yep. not only for wildlife but diversity in terms of your plant choices, um, which has allowed me to put a bit of shade planting in, which I love. Right, round is, the back so yeah. you can create that different area. Absolutely. And, and the plants are beautiful, and Thank you've you. got such a lovely range, but you've, you know, you can get the plants, but you've arranged them so <laughs> beautifully in there, and they just flow through with the grasses and the different shades. So you, you obviously, as well as being a designer, you love your plants, I can tell. I do, actually. I grew some of them from seed. One of the other things I wanted to um, allow for in this garden is cutting material. So you've got lots of stems here that are upright, will last in a vase for a long time. You've got grasses as foliage, mm. you know, real interest there. Um, and almost a bit of an arrangement against the wall, which yeah. allows the movement to be greater appreciated because you've got that solid static object Absolutely, it, yeah. You know? No, it all works and fits <laughs> together beautifully. And, and Rosie uh, Hardy and myself, we judged all the gardens this morning and this came out as the winner yes. so well I'm done it really is lovely much. yes so, and uh, keep that trophy polished won't you? <laughs> I will <laughs> you do will. yes yeah. thank you I'll be okay. in trouble otherwise And now I've come to see the man that's been creating those wonderful floral arrangements on the stage. Of course, it's Jonathan Mosley. Hello, Jonathan. Are you all right? Hello, Martin. I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's always lovely working with you on the stage because we've seen you, obviously, when we visited your garden, but you just create some wonderful arrangements every oh, time. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, you know, autumn's a great time of year and there's lots of inspiring things from fruits and berries and seed heads out there, so mm. I adore this season. What sort of things do you think people are doing in their gardens and plants they can be growing now? Because a lot of what you've been using is your material isn't it from the garden so you know if you're giving people tips yes even if they're thinking ahead to next year what can they plant in their garden that they can harvest in September and use as cut flowers yeah well definitely there's still a lot out there that you can start gathering so things like rubecchias top tip definitely heleniums mm -hmm. absolutely wonderful I love all those wonderful autumn shades there things like calendulas you know they self seed in my garden they start flowering from June right. intermittently throughout the Bina Benariensis, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Cosmos, another another true stalwart there and a real winner for me. So lots of things people can get out yeah. there to give autumn colour. And of course the classics like the dahlias, the, the hardy chrysanthemums, crocosmias, all those types of things. It just goes on and on and on. It's an endless list. So really. even though we're going into autumn, there's no excuse for growing your own cut flowers to make your own arrangements. Definitely no excuse. And don't forget seed heads as well, Martin. There's yeah. all lovely seed heads that you can pick and gather and use. And the fruits from the hedgerows like the the hawthorn berries right. the rose hips the slows absolutely wonderful and it doesn't have to be big does it because i'm just admiring this little frame at the side of Sean, this is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, Something just like a, a little hanging arrangement. You know, that's a few heads, things that perhaps have snapped off, that have broken off, mm. that you can easily make. And I love the way you could hang that in your window and it cheers everybody up who passes by. It does. Well, it's been great working with you. It's Thanks, our first Martin. and last time this year, it isn't is, it? It is, I know. Yeah. It's been an odd year, it but, has, uh, but for that precious moment, we've had a weekend together of lots of wonderful flowers, plants, and horticultural inspiration. But, you know, you've got so much happening in your garden too. I know there's always things to look out for, for there. So I love watching the Pots and Trowels. There's lots of top tips on there for everybody to enjoy. Thank you, Jonathan. And thank you for watching Pots and Trowels here from the Beaver Castle Flower and Garden Show. And we'll be back with you soon for more tips from the garden. See you then. Bye.